Hello. In the next series of videos, we are going to discuss the Diels Alder reaction. In the first video, we are going to give a basic introduction to this reaction and then look at specific examples of the Diels Alder reaction with alkynes as the dienophile. The first of the required reactants for the Diels Alder reaction is a diene. So it has to have at least two double bonds and these have to be conjugated. As a result, this is a minimum a four pi electron system. Also note that it's necessary for the reaction for both of the double bonds to be on the same side of this single bond. We say that it is in the S cis configuration. Here is the computed structure of 1,3-butadiene in the S cis conformation. The second required reactant is a so-called dienophile. This will be a species that has at least one double bond so that it has two pi electrons. Note that the example we have shown so far is the absolute simplest possible case for a diels alder reaction. Part of the utility of the reaction is that we have a very wide range of dienophiles that are possible, as well as dienes. This is the computed structure of the dienophile ethylene. This is the computer structure of ethylene in a side view, emphasizing the location of the double bond. Here is the computed transition state for the Diels Alder addition of 1,3-butadiene to ethylene in a sort of top-down view. The insipid sigma bonds are shown as dashes in this view. Here is another view of the computed transition state structure for the addition of 1,3-butadiene to ethylene. For the specific case of the reaction of the cis-1,3-butadiene with ethylene, our product is cyclohexene. And notice that we've color-coded the carbons in the product to show from whence they came in the reactants. Also notice that while we have three pi systems in the reactants, we have only a single pi uh, system in the product. We've gone from three double bonds to one double bond. In the process though, we formed two new sigma bonds which I've shown here as dotted orange lines so that we can distinguish them from the bonds that previously existed in the reactants. This is the computed structure for the product of the Diels Alder addition of 1,3-butadiene to ethylene cyclohexene. Notice that we formed a six member ring, but now we only have one uh, double bond 
where originally we had three in the reactant. We can map the electron flow as follows here with the black arrows. So we notice that the electrons from two of the double bonds go to form a sigma bond here and a sigma bond there, which are shown in orange over here, and that the other electrons are shown to form a double bond in the center of the 1,3-butadiene, was formerly the 1,3-butadiene. Here is a representative sketch showing the relevant molecular orbitals involved in the Diels Alder addition of 1,3-butadiene to ethylene. On the left is our diene. The relevant molecular orbital is the highest occupied orbital. On the other hand, the relevant molecular orbital, the dienophile, ethylene, is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So the diene is electron rich, the dienophile is electron efficient. It is possible to use as the dienophile an alkyne in place of an alkene because this has the minimum two pi electrons. Notice in this specific case now that because electrons are transferred from the triple bond to form one of the sigma bonds, this bond is reduced in order from a triple bond to a double bond. And in the process, we have a new product that now has two double bonds. We have a cyclodiene, specifically 1,4-cyclohexadiene. Here is the computed structure for the dienophile in the next reaction, which we notice is an alkyne, the simplest one, acetylene. This sketch emphasizes that an alkyne has a triple bond, whereas an alkene has a double bond, but both are suitable as the dienophile in a Diels Alder reaction because they are a pi system. Here is the computed transition state for the Diels Alder addition of 1,3-butadiene to acetylene. Notice the incipient sigma bonds are represented by the dashed lines in the diagram. Here is a side view of the transition state for the addition of 1,3-butadiene to acetylene. The result of the reaction is the formation of a ring that now has two double bonds, one for cyclohexadiene. For our next example involving an alkyne as the dienophile, we replace acetylene with propyne. So notice that as before, the triple bond of the alkyne is reduced in order to a double bond. But now we also have this additional methyl substituent, which ends up becoming a substituent to the ring. So now we have a 1-methyl cyclohexadiene.
the dienophile for the next reaction is also an alkyne, the three carbon alkyne propyne. This sketch remind us of the location of the carbon-carbon triple bond in propyne. Here is the computed transition state for the field alter addition of 1,3-butadiene to propyne. And we can see the forming sigma bonds with dashes in the diagram. Here is another side view of the transition state for this reaction. Here is the computed structure for the product, which is going to be a 1-methyl-1,4-cyclohexadiene. For our final alkyne example, we have 2-butyne. We notice that the triple bond is reduced in order to a double bond, but now we have two additional carbons that end up as methyl substituents on the ring. Also notice that starting with this linear alkyne, we end up with the two ring substituents being cis to each other. So here we have 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexadiene. final dienophile that we're going to look at. Here is a yet more complicated alkyne, 2-butyne. As we have done previously, we've added a sketch showing the location of the carbon-carbon triple bond in this particular alkyne. Here we see the computed transition state and a sort of top-down view for the field alder addition of 1,3-butadiene to 2-butyne. We can see the forming sigma bonds in the dashed lines in the diagram. Here is another uh, view of the computed transition state. Notice the deformation in the previously linear structure of 2-butyne in the transition state. The resulting product for this yield alder reaction is going to be a 1,2-dimethyl 1,4-cyclohexadiene. Table 1 summarizes the calculated enthalpies of activation and enthalpies of reaction for the various yield alder reactions mentioned in this video. Note that we include the reaction with ethylene in line one for reference, 
and then the remaining uh, three reactions use an alkyne as the diunifier. I thank you very much for your kind attention. As before, have a good one.